Welcome to the October meeting of the Salem-Kaiser Transit Board. This evening's uh, agenda includes uh, announcements and changes to the agenda. We'll have a period for public comment, and then we'll have two items to approve on our consent calendar, the minutes of our September 28th meeting and the approval of the fiscal year 2018-19 budget calendar. And then uh, any items deferred from the calendar, we will follow up with uh, uh, to authorize the general manager to negotiate a contract for our uh, transportation services uh, by MV Transportation. We'll have some reports and then the uh, board and management reports. And with that, I will call the meeting to order and ask uh, Director Rogers to lead us in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Linda, would you please take attendance? And with that, we are in ready for announcements and changes to the agenda. And I think we have two changes this evening. Um, we will not be having a presentation as previously indicated. That will be moved to our December 14th meeting. And we have one other change. Uh, uh, Director Lincoln. Um, yes, I'd like to discuss uh, a, a letter from the board uh, to the OTC about the 2120, no, 2124 STIP. Uh, is that something we can discuss right now? No, no okay, we'll, so add, so that we'll add that as that. item two under H. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So is that okay with everybody to add that to the, okay, we're not. And with that, it's now time for public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the group? Okay, then we will move ahead to the consent calendar. Move Wait. approval of the consent calendar. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So we're moving on to our next item, which is uh, item H1 to authorize the general manager to negotiate the final contract language and execute a contract with MV Transportation for transportation services in the uh, not to exceed amount of $34,702,000. And I'll call on our general manager. To I don't have anything to add after that except <laughs> Chief Operating Officer David Trimble will present the staff report. Thank you. Good evening, President Krebs, members of the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. The issue before you this evening is consideration for authorization for the general manager to execute a five-year base term contract with two one-year optional extensions, seven years in total, with MV Transportation for transportation services and the delivery of Chariots Lift, Chariots Regional, and Chariots Shop and Ride services in the amount of $34,702,000. For background information, Chariot's contracts in partnership with a private provider for the delivery of its contracted transportation services, and for which this solicitation includes Chariot's Lift, which is our ADA complementary paratransit service, Chariot's Regional Service, servicing regional areas within Marion and Polk counties, Chariot's Shop and Ride Service, which is a demand response service for seniors and persons with disabilities. Collectively, these programs total approximately 84,000 annual revenue hours, and they're delivered, delivered by 43 uh, Chariots Lift vehicles, 15 Chariots Regional vehicles, and five Chariots Shop and Ride vehicles. Currently, these services are provided by MV Transportation through a contract which was extended to terminate on December 31st, 2017. So in preparation to reprocure these services, Chariot staff engaged in a nine month internal process to review the existing contract to ensure that the new request for proposal was structured appropriately to provide performance accountability and cost transparency. So we really wanted to make sure in the new RFP that we added 
the precise uh, amount of contract controls, performance management, performance expectations through customer service, and more clear definitions. So we really wanted to make an effort to raise the bar with regard to service excellence and continuous improvement in this new contract. So there was a lot of time spent, like I said, over nine months, ensuring that we did so. This proposed contract was procured under procedures as required by the Federal Transit Administration. So I do want to take a few minutes just to go through the process uh, which staff took to ensure a successful RFP process. The Transportation Services RFP was issued on July 10th, 2017. A subsequent pre-proposal conference was held on July 19th. This RFP closed on August 30th, 2017. Ultimately, there were three proposals received by the due date, and those proposals were received by First Transit Incorporated, whose corporate office is based in Cincinnati, Ohio, MV Transportation, whose corporate office is based in Dallas, Texas, and Ride Right LLC, whose corporate office is based in St. Louis, Missouri. A source evaluation committee comprised of five chariots managers and supervisors was appointed to review and evaluate proposals based on cost, qualifications of the firm and proposed staff, work plans, interviews, and references. All proposals received were deemed responsive and within the competitive range of the RFP requirements. Three firms were ultimately interviewed on September 26, 2017, and subsequently best and final cost proposal offers were received and evaluated on October 17th. The Source Evaluation Committee determined MV Transit to be the most responsive to our RFP, and I'll point you to the table that you have in your board reports and memo. There are five columns, as you can see in your table, for evaluation criteria. The total points available through the evaluation process were 100, and you have a listing of the columns of the three proposers. With regard to evaluation criterion, <clears throat> we'll start with qualifications of firm and staff, and that takes into account factors like the firm's number of locations throughout the country, experience within the industry, a light-sized, um, agencies, number of vehicles supervised, and the experience of the management staff that's proposed. Next, we have the technical and work plan, which considers the firm's management approach and philosophy, training and safety programs, corporate support, and any other meritorious programs that the firms may offer to their employees. Next, we have cost. Cost is cost. And we really wanted to see how the firm determined their pricing model compared to our needs and requirements within the RFP. So as you can see, out of 100 points uh, total that were available, MV Transportation scored the highest with 82.25. Next we had Ride Right LLC at 81.5. And lastly, First Transit Incorporated at 77.5 total points. We've also included the total contract price. That's a five-year con base contract with two optional one-year extensions. MV had the lowest price at $34,702,000, followed by Ride Right LLC at $39,33,414, and lastly, First Transit at $41,191,000. So um, based on the criterion and based on the evaluation, MV came out uh, the most responsive. I think it should be noted for the board that in response to this RFP process, uh, we experienced worthy competition, uh, which we were very happy about, and substantial proposer interest. All of the proposers for the Transportation Services RFP were well-established and well-qualified with numerous contracts throughout the nation and in some cases globally as well. So with that, the Evaluation Committee recommends that the Board authorize the General Manager to execute a five-year base term contract with two one-year optional extensions, seven years in total, with MV Transportation for Transportation, transportation Services for the delivery of Chariots Lift, Chariots Regional, and Chariots Shop and Ride Services in the amount of $34,702,000. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? Are we ready for a motion then? 
Director Kelly? I move the board authorize the general manager to execute a five-year base term contract with two one-year optional extensions, <clears throat> seven years total, with MV Transportation for transportation services for the delivery of Chariots Lift, Chariots Regional, and Chariot Shop and Ride services in the amount of $34,702,000. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Director Bush. I just want to say thank, oops, thank you for all the work that you've put in, and I know that there's many conversations and a lot of details to work out. We're just putting the icing on the cake by following your discussions, and um, thank you very much. And thank you. I can't take credit for most of it. I have a great team that we work with, so uh, kudos to them. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Then. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we'll move on to Thank the you. next item, which was added to our agenda, and that is the, uh, the proposed uh, change in STIP funding for uh, purchase of transit buses. And I'll call on Director Lincoln. Um, yes, this issue just came up uh, last week at that recent OTC meeting, I believe. And then I heard about it at the SCATS meeting, which Bob was also at, Director um, Krebs. And um, apparently the OTC has, is proposing in their 2021 to 2024 uh, State Transportation Improvement Fund to zero out um, the federal funds for buses, for bus replacements. Currently, well, in the 2018 to 2021 step, there's 15 million allocated out of the federal funds, which gets distributed all over the state. We don't get all that, but but we could get some of it. And then, but they're proposing not to have any allocated for bus replacements in the next step, which they're looking at right now. And I don't know if that's because they are thinking that the statewide um, payroll tax uh, is it was going to be a replacement for that. But of course, we really need that for service, not for buses. So. Um, this is kind of a surprise, apparently, and I'm proposing that we um, authorize the general manager to write a letter for uh, Director Krebs' signature uh, to send to the OTC. And I know that, um, Director Krebs, you commented on this at the OTC meeting, so they, they know that that's a concern of ours, but I think it would be really helpful to have written uh, back up for that. And then I also think it would be a good idea if we could get um, uh, the local area commission to also um, write a letter or at least support our our position on this. I, I believe we discussed it and Ken had included transit in the enhanced funds as far as the letter um, I going. Think this is the first shot out of the door. This is, you know, the first part of the, the right. discussion. Right. And um, the other thing is the area commission most likely will have an opportunity to meet with the Transportation Commission in December because it's our two-year annual um, charter reappointment. And normally the steering committee, of which I am a member, uh, for sure tries to make that meeting and they always ask us questions. And so it's, it's another by thing that we can do. I think the letter is a really good idea. Um, but there was quite a bit of discussion on, on that. And I believe that Ken had said that his letter that he had intended to send about the enhanced funds had included transit and staff had not included that there. But I believe that there, there is that support. Yeah, and that, that's, that's good to hear. Um, I think, though, that the OTC was going to try to finalize, at least initially, this at their next meeting. They have to go out for public the hearing. The STIP has to go through public hearing. And so even if they think that they want to put these buckets in, you know, the public needs to make their, their, uh, their uh, feelings known. And, and, and we, as part of the public, need to do that, too. Right, right and point out to them that buses cost a lot of money and part of the reason that the employee payroll tax 
was implemented was not for capital as much as it was for operations. Right. So we'll, we'll do some talking too, but I, the letter is a good idea. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think drafting a letter and then we can hit it again. And right. Well then we need a motion and then we can make it official. Okay, so I will see if I can put this in succinct. Um, uh, move that the board authorize the general manager to write a letter to the OTC um, to be signed by President Krebs, um, requesting that the federal stip, federal money for buses in the 21-24 stip be the money be put back into the stip for, for bus replacement. I don't know if that's a the only thing I would add is that in the enhanced non-highway category. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll we'll second that. That's been moved and second. Now do we have more discussion? Well, Director Kelly. One of the things, um, federal funding that comes to the state, uh, whatever that may be, there are certain pots of money that are more flexible than other money. And since the state constitution requires that things related to automobiles are spent only on roads, it, it puts the state in a bad situation with expenditures. And, and um, I think um, that the letter is a really good idea to, to call that out again. I'm hoping that, that part of the uh, transportation improvement program discussion in the middle of of October had some of that discussion because I know that Ken had said that he was planning on um, making sure because most of the members of the Area Commission understand the importance of transit vehicles because mm -hmm. we're always trying to get money for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Director Rogers? Since this is the first shot across the bow, so to speak, what kind of timeline are we looking at for when this gets finalized? So I'm thinking about and going to neighborhood associations and saying, hey, can you write a letter in support of us or against this? You know, how much time are we looking at? Well, I believe that there's going to be a draft uh, of, of the uh, step for the next uh, Transportation Commission meeting and then sometime in December, they're going to, there's going to be a period of public comment and then in December, they're going to make possibly a final vote on it or no. At least a first vote on it. So December the first. soonest. Mm -hmm. So we've got like uh, 50 days or so has to be done before Christmas, I would assume. If I could. Oh, uh, yes. So actually what we're trying to do is make sure that the recommendation that the OTC puts out for feedback includes this. So the feedback, the public input is not going to be until after the holidays. Mm -hmm. No, because... It's just the beginning of the STIP yes. process. Yes. And that yeah, I takes. Don't, I don't have the calendar with me, but. It takes. Months. Yeah, yeah. Sort of like 12 to 15 months, and there are public hearings all over after people propose projects, et cetera. My concern is you know, it's not imminent, but it's. No, but no. it's, it's no. something no. we need to. Out. It's something we need to express our opinion on because if we don't it's a good chance we could lose these are not all our funds they go to transit districts all over sure. the state but uh, if we don't get if these funds go away then when our we're either going to be running junker buses or we're going to be having to go out with a bond levy and what it does is it moves federal funding down and the local mm -hmm. people have to pay for it rather than paying for it with their mm -hmm. federal income taxes they're going to be paying for it with property taxes or some other local fee mm -hmm. and uh, we would just as soon not have that happen because they're already paying the federal taxes. So we have Saturday service but no buses. <laughs> yes, well, or, or we don't have Saturday service because we have to buy the buses using that money. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of, of it's, it's just not a very positive thing. And, and House Bill 2017 was set up to, to allow districts that are starved for resources to have enough money to provide the services for the community. And if we have to start using that money to backfill uh, capital costs, then, then we end up with ha not being able to provide this, the levels of service that we're trying to provide. So it's a, it's a catch-22 situation, and it really needs to, to stay there. And I did test, yes. Uh, 
If I could, so at the November work session, we'll add an agenda item to talk about the STIP process and present to you the calendar so you can see what mm -hmm. the process That's is. Good. Thank okay. you. So could I have just a clarification with the enhanced non-highway category? Why, why was that important to be in the well, motion? That's the name of the funds. Okay, there, so there's actually, there's enhancement funds for highways and there's non-highways and we're not trying uh, to take money away from the highway program. We're, these funds are already designated to be used for transit and other, and other uh, related services. Okay. So, so we're not, and they're not, they can be used for highways too, but they're basically more focused on non-highway. That's important. Yes. So any other comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. <clears throat> so we're ready to move into informational items and I'll call on our general manager. So I have a few items to report. So uh, since the last meeting, uh, I attended both the Oregon Transit Association fall conference, as well as the uh, APTA annual meeting and expo. And I think uh, Director Krebs will report on the expo, uh, but the, the OTA conference was the first one we've had in two years, so it was uh, in Pendleton, Oregon, and uh, brought all the transit agencies uh, statewide together to talk about various things. And you can imagine House Bill 2017 was one of the major discussion items. Uh, over the last week, uh, I attended the Oregon Transportation Commission meeting that we had just talked about, where I represented ODOT's Public Transit Advisory Committee, and I testified on this, the exact issue that we're talking about here. The interesting piece was in the uh, uh, August and September OTC workshops in the uh, proposed distribution of the, the non-highway funds, the bus replacements was a category, and this month it was dropped off. So uh, not only did I testify on it, uh, Director Krebs testified in his piece on it, and uh, so uh, the OTC is aware of it, and then when they did their recap of what they heard, they mentioned bus replacements is an issue for them to relook at. So we'll be watching to see what modifications uh, that staff puts together based on the feedback. Uh, I also, uh, two days ago, attended the first uh, HB 2017 Rules Advisory Committee for the State Transit Improvement Fund, which is just the transit piece. So I guess I could say I'm probably more confused now than I was before the meeting started. Um, it's the first meeting, it's gonna be messy. Uh, lots of questions with no answers. But the, the key part was that all the questions were compiled. Uh, and next week, the Oregon Transit Association's Legislative Committee is meeting to finalize another list of questions uh, that we will submit to ODOT staff for them to incorporate and consider as part of version two of the rules. Uh, and we'll meet again next month to uh, provide comment on that. But, so the process is kicked off. Um, it's still a little murky, but we're in that in that process. Uh, and then last night I attended the City of Salem's Transit Committee meeting uh, and presented a, I guess we'll call it Transit 101 or Chariots 101 to the group to give them a common knowledge and background on, on our services. The, Generally a pretty good meeting. I thought we got a little too focused on how the committee could help chariots as opposed to how the committee could help the city of Salem help chariots. And uh, we'll be working on that in the subsequent meetings. Uh, uh, and uh, Director Lincoln was there and I'm sure she will comment on that. Uh, and with that, that concludes my reports. Oh, thank you. So. We're now ready to talk about committees, and uh, the first one is the Special Transportation Fund Advisory Committee, and I'll call on Director Thompson. The uh, council the meeting, uh, okay. there was no agenda items. And the next one is the Mid Willamette Area Commission on Transportation, Director Kelly. Oh, okay. So we did have an area commission meeting on transportation, um, and um, the major points that happened is there's a program called All Road Transportation Safety Arts Program. And um, about 18 months, two years ago, um, the 
department decided that the, for their safety money, they were going to not look at what the jurisdiction of the road was, but look at the, the, the safety issues and rank them and then do projects for safety with blindness according to whether it's an ODOT road, a county road, or a city street, so that they, they can get a handle on some of the safety. And so she was just presenting the information on the next round, which is going to have the same blindness, not paying attention to where the safety money is, because it's all, all roads. Uh, we talked about our draft uh, report, biennial report to the OTC, and uh, gave some feedback to staff. And then we had a discussion with Ken Woods, who is um, one of the area commission chairs, and they have invited the chairs, the commission, the transportation commission, and invited the chairs. And we were talking about responses to the questions that the chairs had been asked, and that's when part of the conversation came up with ranking and and talking about things. And, and so um, Ken had assured both co Vice Chair Kathy Clark and I that, um, that his ranking did not only go th three places like the staff's ranking did, that it, it included transit. And then we just had a little bit of a general discussion and, and adjourned, although it was, um, pretty, we're gonna, it really sort of depends on what the work level is. Um, and I think that it would be good when we have a little bit more of an idea on how 2017 is implemented if we um, make some uh, effort to get on the agenda, talk to Mike Jaffe, to get onto the agenda, to sort of talk about what we're doing so far in implementing so it's not just a, okay, here's you know what we're doing. So maybe just some general things. and. And some updates on how the changes are going on the regional service because a lot of the folks who were on that committee um, serve the communities that the regional service is re designed to implement. And some of them. So. Thank you. And our next. Uh, Item is the Mid Willamette Valley Council of Governments, and that is Director Thompson. Uh, yes, I had two meetings there the executive committee and then the regular meeting. And um, most of the things in the, in the regular meeting were uh, just general internal type things like uh, deciding on a fund balance uh, minimum uh, for, our, for our budget and uh, uh, talking about the recruiting policy on recruiting. I know our general manager. Or executive director over there uh, uh, recruits city managers and other city officials for some of the smaller jurisdictions around. And we did, talked about a policy, uh, some policy changes that he was re recommending there. Uh, the main thing was that we had our audit and we passed and uh, everybody's happy for another year. Thank you. And I'm the next one up with the uh, SCATS, the Salem-Kaiser Area Transportation Study. We met last Tuesday. Uh, we went over, uh, most of the activities were uh, going over uh, various uh, documents that are in the planning stages. We did have public comment uh, from a citizen who came in and asked uh, the uh, SCATS group to take a stand about the greenhouse gas uh, legislation that is being moving on, uh, is being changed in, in at the federal level. and. Uh, the group more or less uh, did not take a stand. They, they're sort of supporting the state's uh, position on that, and uh, we'll see where that goes at this time. Um, we did have uh, a uh, update on the 2021-2024 uh, STIP, uh, and we had uh, a uh, presentation on safe routes to school, uh, which is going to receive a lot more funding in the next uh, uh, statewide transportation plan 
and uh, that should mean more sidewalks to get people or get children to school safely and and uh, other improvements and of course uh, as transit operators most of our uh, clients are pedestrians before they get on our buses or off our buses so having good sidewalks and safe routes to school also benefits many of our our constituents um, we had a few minor adjustments to the uh, scats uh, 2018-23 tip and uh, we had a presentation uh, on the uh, greenhouse gas performance measures that the state is working on uh, those are uh, and most of these items are on the, uh, if, you, if you want more detail, you can look on the uh, uh, COGS website and they have detailed pages on all of these items. Uh, then I gave a report on the uh, OMPOC meeting and uh, that was about all that we covered. I did bring up the issue of, uh, in case we're all hearing about the, the preparations being made for the big Cascadia earthquake, and I made the suggestion or asked the question of whether we have fuel reserves because if the earthquake happens, they're predicting that we will not be able to get a lot of supplies in here from any distance and we will need fuel to run our fire trucks, our police cars and our other types of ambulances and uh, possibly generators for hospitals and stuff. Uh, so we need to find out, uh, I was just curious to find out if there were was a policy on preserving fuel like maybe embargoing all the filling stations so that fuel is available to emergency vehicles and uh, I got some feedback but it looks like they're working on it but they haven't got a formal policy established yet so I th I personally think that that is probably as important as fixing our bridges so they don't fall down in the earthquake because if we don't have fuel to run our stuff uh, a lot of people are going to suffer we anyway that was what I brought up there and uh, the next, uh, I'll move on to the next item, which is the uh, OMPOC, that's the Oregon Metropolitan Planning Organization Consortium. I attended that meeting in Bend, and it was a very productive meeting. Uh, we discussed a lot of items, and uh, i just briefly go over some of them. Uh, we uh, talked about the new the House Bill 2017 and what some of the things that it contains, and one of the things that it does is the, the Connect Oregon uh, will have no competitive grants in the next uh, go round because they're, they're all earmarked programs and uh, they will still require applications and going through that process but there won't be any uh, open programs at this time in nets. And also transit is no longer eligible for Connect Oregon grants because uh, of the funding from House Bill 2017. I won't go over the transit portion of that. We did discuss the transit portion of HP 2017. Uh, we also discussed the safe routes to school, which is high on priority in most of the MPOs. Uh, there were some talks about uh, the mega projects out in Portland, and one of the things coming with the mega projects is possible tolling on the interstate freeways in the metro area and uh, they indicated that there is a uh, pushback by a Washington state representative on uh, putting tolls on Interstate 5. So uh, that uh, may not happen for a while. Uh, they also talked that they're trying to develop uniform standards for uh, pavement conditions. Right now, I guess not all agencies reporting pavement conditions are doing it under the same criteria. So they're going to try to to come up with standardized uh, pavement issues and so forth. Uh, not much happening at the federal level. Uh, the Oregon Public Transit Plan is just about finished and uh, can be viewed on ODOT's webpage. So that would be a, uh, and there were, there are uh, a number of things happening on that as far as bringing it up to date. Uh, they're also talking about having a uniform platform for all eight of Oregon's MPOs so that all of their reporting would be sort of uniform and they were thinking of making this possibly a task force to look at this and maybe bringing in a uh, IT program that would uh, serve uh, 
work under the OMPOC umbrella but be available to all of the MPOs and uh, the cost of that would be about 150,000 a year uh, for the for the uh, copyright usage and so forth. Uh, anyway, that will probably be something that goes along for a while. Uh, we had the draft timetable for the 2021-24 uh, STIP. Uh, very few modernization problems. Most of it is fix it. And uh, the MPOs want better communication with the uh, Oregon Transportation Commission. Right now, I was able to represent OMPOC at the uh, recent Oregon Transportation Commission meeting, but uh, I was not, I was the only one there. And the issue is that most of the MPOs have different needs, so they would like to bring their needs individually so they could uh, give those to the commission rather than having it as one lump thing uh, for the whole group. Uh, and uh, there's, I'm, I'm, I think that covers most of it. Uh, there was a lot of handouts and so forth, and I'll get some of those out to you by email so that you can look at them. Yes, Director Kelly. One, one of the, the things about the MPOs is, is that they should be working with their area commissions on transportation because they're mainly, you know, they're within those areas. And I know that, that um, there's quite a bit of, that there's some overlap in both the membership and the work plans of the MPOs and the Area Commissions on Transportation. So um, are, are there MPOs who are having problems with their Area Commissions on Transportation? I don't know if they're having problems. It's just a, I think one of the, one of the issues is the MPOs are federally uh, mandated and the acts are state mandated and, and uh, they pretty much overlap but the acts have some of the acts have more rural territory I mean most of the MPOs are made up of ur within an urban growth boundary and so you have acts that are do not have large population uh, cities in them and those would be uh, they wouldn't have an MPO uh, overlapping them but, and just recently, I understand they formed a new act that serves the metro area, so they, they've got a, another one up there. But yes, I agree with you. I think they need to be working together, and we have levels of government that maybe we could work to somehow get them working together so there's less different agencies having to approve things. But anyway, going, going on, uh, our next... Uh, I guess our next uh, thing is uh, our general manager's report. And just all, gave you it. just gave it. <laughs> that, that's what you asked. Yes. And uh, because we didn't have any, any, any uh, operational reports this time. So uh, going on, I guess then it leaves me as the board of directors. I had a very busy month. Uh, I mean, I almost felt like I had a part-time job. I put in almost two 40-hour weeks, so that uh, is quite a bit, but had a lot of interesting things, exciting things. Uh, probably the highlight of, the, of it was attending the APTA, the American Public Transit Association annual meeting and expo. Uh, it was a massive expo, and we got to walk around and look at uh, a lot of equipment and parts, and, and uh, there were five of us that went from uh, chariots, uh, I was the only board member, but uh, our general manager went, and our director of communications, our director of operations, and our director of maintenance were also there, and, and for good reason, because uh, or I could go around and look at the new buses and kick the tires on the new buses. Uh, I really didn't need to look at, at carburetors or tires or things like that, and so, uh, and uh, there were also IT vendors, there were uh, but it was a very exciting thing. It filled up two great big exhibit halls, and uh, the exhibits were so great that they even had uh, trains in, in there. And uh, both Ellen and I got to ride on the uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, and we were talking that maybe something like that might be uh, useful in doing a downtown shuttle or maybe a 
Kaiser Station Shuttle. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you still have an employee because you have to have a person on there for security uh, to press the panic button if the machine doesn't respond properly. So uh, you can't operate them with passengers without having a staff person. But it was exciting to ride on them, and they went out in the back, and they probably went all the five miles an hour. But uh, mm -hmm. it was it was interesting to get the parking lots to ride on something. Yeah, they ran in the parking lot. They didn't run in mixed traffic. Uh, I also attended a lot of other meetings this month. Uh, participated in the uh, uh, Age Friendly Cities program, which is a planning process to make Salem an age friendly city and get rid of obstacles that focus on one particular uh, gender or, gender or uh, uh, decade of life. So everybody here has a friendly city. Um, I uh, this looks like a lot of stuff went on this month. I uh, had some planning time at the COG because we were working up talking points for the uh, Oregon Transportation Commission. Uh, and uh, we had a board planning retreat, which uh, we're working on establishing weekend service and evening service. And so the board had their first attempt at that. We still ha need a lot of information, but we are working to uh, hopefully have service improvements starting in January of 2019. And uh, with that, I'm going to call on Director Thompson since he's not ready. He's no. I'm, I'm ready. I'm okay. just cleaning my screen. I know you are. <laughs> uh, I I just attended the the basic things or work the work session, the regular board meeting, and the board planning retreat. Also attended the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Public Policy Committee where we discussed the uh, library bond measure that's coming up. That was the topic of that thing, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Director okay. Lincoln. Well, I was at the last work session and, uh, of course, the retreat and attended the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce in, in uh, Director Bush's place, um, the Kaiser Chamber of Commerce Luncheon Forum. Um, went to the demo forum on Wednesday and heard uh, uh, Dr. Jones talk about the homeless situation in Salem. He's the new um, director of the Arches Project, which is in the old Coldwell Banker Building on Commercial and Union and had, sounds like, really um, passionately interested and had lots of ideas, but certainly no silver bullets. Um, went to the City Club uh, forum on the library bond, and I hope everyone is going to vote. It's a, a really critical, I think, for our, for our library, future of our library. Uh, attended the West Kaiser Neighborhood Association meeting and got on their agenda for probably a month or so maybe a couple months down the road to talk about our proposed schedule, um, what things that we're gonna be planning over the next few months. Uh, attended the SCATS uh, policy meeting and the area commission meeting as the alternate. Also um, commented to at the SCATS meeting in my capacity as a member of the Kaiser Traffic Safety uh, Bicycle PED Committee on uh, urging the uh, the group to support the um, resolution for safe routes to school. And then um, also attended the uh, Mayor's Transit Committee second meeting last night. Um, listened to Alan give a very good rundown of what Chariots does and the history. And um, uh, I think I, I agree there's more, you know, well, can we buy bus passes or um, there's a lot of interest in, in employer passes um, and someone spoke up about how parking, the amount of parking that's available um, really affects how many people use transit, which was very insightful. Um, but I, I felt like they really don't have a real clear path of where they're going to go next, but I don't know, they're working on that. I think good people there, but um, we, they do need to get to down to what, what the city can do to in, the, in their jurisdiction. Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Director Rogers? Oh. I thought it would close this out, I guess not. <laughs> okay, well I had the regular board meeting, work session, executive session. I really enjoyed our board planning retreat. Um, I was hoping to get 
a little bit more done, but because the rules committee still has to tweak some things, there were different areas we couldn't necessarily definitively, definitively say this is what we want to do and this is where we're going. So we have to be patient. I had two NOLA, uh, two neighborhood association meetings. There was the NOLA and ELNA, and they're excited about transit, but they're calm, cool, and collected, at least right now, just, you know, waiting for that day when I say, hey, it starts next week, you know. Um, I would have gone, I was gonna go to the Gebsner meeting, which they didn't have. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, and while there's still light when I get off work, I'm trying to get out and visit with neighbors. I'm running out of my little brochures and I have to get some more. And, and let's see, and then my favorite one was we had a community outreach, NOLA, ELNA, CAPES, and it was, uh, they called it the day of play. We had 350 to 400 people showing up. We had pizza, snow cones, fire trucks came with lights going off. And of course I was there with a table for transit. And I was able to hand out a lot of brochures and talk to people. The one thing I realized was I should have brought a sheet that told people what the fares were because I don't have them memorized. Of course, that's the first thing people ask is, how much does it cost? But um, there was one person who was trying to get from South Salem to Chemeketa and back, and I was able to give her a little, a little bit of information and also a bus pass, which she was very thankful for. And a couple who just moved to town, just not too far down the street from me, and they wanted to try transit, wanted to try the bus. And guess what, I had two bus passes for them. And, and so I thought that was a nice gesture on our part. And let's see, is there, I guess I got all my notes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Director Bush. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I had a busy month. Um, one week of it was spent um, with outdoor school, teaching science to sixth graders, and that was an exciting week. But I did attend the, uh, <clears throat> the board meeting and executive sessions, the work sessions. Um, I went to Kaiser's Coffee with a Cop, where um, several um, of our area's finest um, spent some time at McDonald's and just talked to the community. Get to get to know each other there. I went to our local elementary school's parent meeting on behalf of our neighborhood association and um, found out about different things. And they talked about sidewalk safety and walking to school and um, very, very important to parents that their children are safe to and going to and from school. So this is all very timely information. Um, I was uh, able to attend Colonel Kevin Dial's retirement party from the um, I think it was the Army National Guard. That was a very insightful um, event, um, very patriotic and moving, and we got to meet, my husband and I got to meet his parents. Um, so we sat, sat and talked for about two hours after it, so it was, it was very good. I, um, after the, uh, let's see. Oh, after our work session, uh, um, City of Kaiser had a meeting, their council meeting, and I went and invited them to our strategic planning session. Um, I, they didn't, weren't able to come, but I was able to, to be that representative there and also ask them to be, um, again, aware of the Safe Routes to School information, and so I put a plug in for that. And then I attended the Kaiser Chamber Open House yesterday they had a, all of their directors had different tables around in the, at the Civic Center, and um, Nate Brown came up at one point and wants us to have some input on their transportation grant plan. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. They have a grant that they're working on and applying for, and they want some information from us to, on there, so he asked me to, to do that. I'm sure we'll talk more. Um, 
And then for our, um, the Great Oregon Shakeout on the 19th, we did, I did a presentation at our uh, church senior Bible study and we practiced getting, getting down, and getting low and holding on during the big quake. So that was a very um, awareness event, helped us, oh, that could fall on me. I need to move or I can't move. What can I do to be safe? Um, let's see, I think that's almost, Oh, and then our um, Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association had a presentation by, from our code enforcement team and we talked about how we can help our neighbors and our neighborhoods and be safer. And as far as, um, again, the sidewalk issue came up and keeping things cleaned up. And, um, and I gave a chariots update there of our uh, strategic planning session. And then I went and, um, uh, talked about that right after the, re the retreat was over. I went to coffee with Kathy, which is a co time with Mayor C Kathy Clark from the city of Kaiser and was able to freshly say what all we did on our retreat. And then I sat in on um, the State Transportation Improvement Fund Rules Advisory Committee that our general manager talked about earlier. And yes, it is still very muddy water right now. <laughs> so, and that's all. Thank you, Director Kelly. Well, I have had a busy month as well. Not all of it is transit related, but um, I went to the Scan Neighborhood Association. We did the work session. We had the retreat. I did the Area Commission on Transportation. Of course, the board meeting and the executive sessions. Um, at the Scan meeting, I was sort of there and just wanted to let them know that um, that things will progress, but they will progress slowly and that there is, a, you know, there's going to be a, a timeline and we'll be looking for people for various things, but just to sort of let them know what's going on. I didn't have a free Saturday in October. <laughs> um, and um, so I met with some other people. One of the things that was uh, fun is that we had the Gilbert House. I'd made arrangements for the Gilbert House, not knowing about the, the Salem Station project because I made this arrangement back in the early part of July and they were working on it, but I didn't know about it. So um, she didn't know that I was a board member, but mentioned the, the Salem Station and they're really excited about it. And she said, you know, because kids really like buses. And, and it reminded me that when we'd been at the art fair, there was a darling little girl who, wanted to try out the bus. We, were, we had a bus there, a display, because we were getting new buses. They were, they were the Eldorados, but the kids didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so I was sort of there working with the staff, and the mother says, come on, I'll buy you ice cream. And I said, she can stay on the bus as long as she wants. She said, you don't understand. This is the third time we've been to the bus today. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted the bus more than ice cream, so. Uh, I am working with uh, a young man and an advisor at Sprague High School for a, a key club, which is a Kiwana service club for high schoolers at Sprague, and then I'm doing backup for the key club advisors at South. So uh, all in all, a, a busy time frame in October. Thank you. I might, I might also mention that today we had a uh, reporter from the uh, Oregon Business Magazine, uh, and he was uh, he interviewed me, and then he uh, went with Matt from staff over and wrote on the uh, West Salem connector, and he's doing an article on on the connector, and he tried to figure out why we're discontinuing it and replacing it with regular route service, and I tried to fill him in, but I think Matt also had time to chat with him about it so uh, and director Kelly has another comment. I, I have one reaction when you're talking about fuel and having fuel sources that is one thing that that concerns me uh, because all of the entire state's fuel supply is in Portland in an area where it's in a subduction zone and so I think that that should be something that all of us should be concerned about and talk to our legislators and other people about maybe thinking about how to move it someplace else. It was convenient when they built it on the river back when, but 
because we now know more things. It's sort of like the bridge that's over the river that now we know is over the fault line. Um, we sort of need to work on that, and I would think that that would be a high priority that everybody could get together with. Or, move, or have some fuel storage in other places that might be less susceptible. They probably totally need to move that fuel mm -hmm. storage. But. Anyway, and uh, also just a reminder that we have the the ribbon cutting at the uh, Gilbert House Museum on uh, at 1030 3rd. on Friday, November 3rd, which is a week from tomorrow. So if you can make it, why uh, show up should be fun. Anything else to discuss or bring before this body? Then we are adjourned. Not even an hour.